Hey there, I'm author Shannon Reber, and this is Genre's Bookshop Podcast. And today, Ryan Bennett and I are interviewing Susan Landrigan, my fellow what what would Writer. you call us co-hosts on uh, on the Lit Chicks? Yes, Lit Chick. yes, that would be correct. Okay, well, but one of my uh, three co-hosts on the Lit Chicks podcast, <laughs> which we do on on Tuesdays. So if you if you if you don't follow us there, you're totally not awesome. So. Yeah, I I, fo- I watched it last night and I was Chinese. Yes, yes, it, yes, it yes. Actually, it was after trivia, so I was eating cold Chinese and <laughs> eating cold Chinese, time. watching us talk about books. I mean, yeah. what better pastime is there? Yeah. yeah, you go out for trivia. Yeah, there's a um, place up in in Lakewood at the Southern Tier Brewery, and it's music <laughs> trivia where they play a little bit of a song. You have to name the artist and the title of the song, and then like a little. It sounds really cool. Question. I think yeah, you would really, like that, really cool. Susan. I've been doing it now for like almost a year. Wow. I have some that meet up there. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. And by the way, I'm still resentful about the uh, Tuesday night trivia thing because he used to be my drinking buddy on Tuesday nights, and then he started doing trivia, and I'm just all by myself for uh, uh, for Tuesday nights. Right. And so, you yeah, could go out Sadness. later because I, mean, I don't get home <laughs> until like ten. Well, the bars are cool. open. <laughs> I'm old, I don't go out. That's true. All right. Well, we could talk to our the our our yeah. uh, interviewee. We could. Well, let's talk about. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the point of this thing, right? It kind of is. Yeah. About. Yeah. All right. Is, so, is, Susan, yeah. how many titles do you have published? Yeah. Um, I think it's about eleven now. Nice. Wow. nice. Okay. Yeah. So, not all of them. Everyone would be interested in. So, <laughs> I have several, but you know, lots of people would like. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you, uh, the children's books that you do, how many, how many children's books do you have? Do you know? Um, probably about eight, eight, eight. children's books. Eight or nine. Yeah. Uh-huh. I have mostly children's books published and, um, some are specific to the child that they were written for. Cause I have three great, three, three yes. grandchildren. So, uh-huh. um, I was living in Florida and my grandchildren were up here in New York. And um, I just wrote them as a way to connect with my grandkids um, because I wasn't seeing them very often. Right. So, you know, it's like, grandma's still thinking about you even though I'm far away. Yeah. That's and, very sweet. Yeah. And that's why we moved back this way was because we just didn't see them enough. So. Yeah. Well, that's cute. I Do you have any them. other... Other like how you your writing journey, if you will call it, like I mean, obviously you talk about your love for your grandchildren. Is there anything else that inspired you to write? Well, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, my grandchildren are too old for children's books now, but I enjoyed the writing process. So I thought, where do I go from here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, where, where did you where go? You... Oh. Well, I did. <laughs> I wrote, like, the oldest grandchild right now is 14. Yes. He's not going to be interested in children's books at all. <laughs> so then I interested wrote... Interested in books? Pardon me? Are they interested in books, at least? Um, so, 14's that age. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. 14 year old is not interested in books, really, I don't think. Yeah. So, but, well, you know, I've got time to it around. <laughs> <laughs> So then okay. I wrote another book was about our pets growing up um, with oh, my kid. Yeah. And we have some stories to tell about those pets. And um, <laughs> they did some crazy things. So Most people's pets do, more yes. For an older audience, not a small child. Okay. And then I wrote a biography about my mom because... Oh. Um, My youngest grandchild would come over to my house in Florida when she was about two years old and we'd be looking through photo photo albums and she'd like to point out the pictures, especially the pictures of her mom or anybody she knew. She'd say, mama, that's mama. (laughs) And we would get to the pictures that my mother was in and she was like, I, she just likes to (laughs) ask who this is because she died in 2000. So. She had never met her, didn't know who she was. So I decided to write a biography about my mom. Oh, that's really cool. My 
when my great aunt May, when she, before she passed, she went through all like family photos and wrote who was on the back and what year it was taken. And then she had like a, like a scrapbook, not really a scrapbook, but like, and she wrote down as much as she could remember. Because uh -huh. she, she was still with it at the end, but she just physically, she just wasn't there. She uh -huh. just so mentally, she was still sharp as a whip. And my mother had written like a sort of, it was a very short autobiography yeah. um, about her and her, my dad and their okay. life together. Okay. And I sort of took that, reworded it and expanded upon it and added pictures. That's so. amazing. That's really cool. I did. I actually didn't know about that one. I think you have mentioned it before, but I, I guess I just forgot. Sorry, I do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to be editing that one because the picture that I put on the front cover, um, was I wanted a different picture and I couldn't find it. Oh. And I went through my oh. picture and I recently found it. So I thought, I'm going to be redoing the book and this is it. Can, can oh you wow. Oh, that's cute. That's really nice. I love that's that. Really nice. So the picture that I found was the picture that was always on my grandmother's um, dining room buffet. Whenever oh. we went to grandma's house, my oh, mom's cool. picture was there. And this is <laughs> the one I wanted. That's fabulous. Of her younger years. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're, you're going to, you're going to do that sometime soon then, right? You're uh, redoing the cover. I'm going to edit it. Um, yeah, I recently found out um, that my sister had something to do with it. I had no idea that she had anything to do with it because it says quite clearly on the um, cover sheet that it was written by my mother and father. Okay. So when the book came out, behind my back, um, people were talking about, well, my sister said, well, I did that. And so I thought, <laughs> you know what? I need to find out how much involvement she had. And if okay. she was truly involved, that should be added. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You got to give credit where credit's due. <laughs> Great. It's just she did that, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't take it word for word. I added my own. I changed mm. things more to my liking of wording. So, yeah. you know, it wasn't like <laughs> I stole the work. Right, exactly. <laughs> But I still want to give credit where credit is due. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but you also had two stories in the Dead End book too, right? I did. Uh -huh. Yes. Those are two, those are your two spooky experiences in life, correct? Right. Yes. I read that a while ago. Can you kind of like refresh my memory what those two stories were about? <laughs> oh, they were ghost stories. Um, about okay. ghosts I who remember. visited me. <laughs> mm -hmm. One was what I was a flight attendant for a few years and one oh. was at a hotel. Um, and it was super creepy. And I thought when I woke up, I thought that was really weird what had happened. And I thought, I'm just going to say it was a bad dream. But then I went back to the same hotel and the exact same thing happened the oh. exact same way. And I thought, oh. this is not <laughs> coincidence. That's <laughs> not a dream. That is not a dream. <gasps> oh, well. <laughs> and the other one was, uh, the other one was you and Eric, right? Right. Eric and I were traveling. My husband okay. and I were traveling and we stayed at a hotel that was known to be haunted and I was hoping to <laughs> some ghosts, but, um, it, you know, I think don't ghosts usually um, come to you while you're in that state between asleep and awake? I've never had an experience, so I don't know. I, I've, uh, I thought that was, I hate to say it, demons that did that. <laughs> <laughs> the first one was yeah. more like a demon, but the second one was okay. very... A um, pleasant funny. young woman. <laughs> and there was a young woman who was said to have um, jumped out the window and killed herself. Oh. And perhaps that who is who it was at that hotel. Okay. Ooh, yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Huh. That is wild. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't actually in your story, was it? You didn't say that 
you didn't say that part in the story. I don't remember it anyway. You know what? I added, um, I had put in like a photo of the story and of the backstory. And I don't think that that wasn't included. Oh, so. okay. Okay. I see. I mean, sometimes the best score, scary stories are you like, they're based on a true story, but you don't know what part's <laughs> true and what part's not. And you kind of yes, come exactly. to your own conclusions and <laughs> that makes it scarier. Makes it right. more authentic. Make your own. Make your own scaries. Actually, the second one was not scary. It was just, I don't know, some people might have thought it was spooky, but unsettling. Oh. <laughs> yeah. She wasn't there. It was you know, as I, I opened up my eyes more and became more awake, it's like, there's no one here. <laughs> mm. Oh, that <laughs> makes it creepier. No <laughs> <laughs> See, I always, if, if something like creeps me out in the middle of the night, I will open my eyes and expect to see something and then when I realize that there's nothing there I go oh okay and then I go back to sleep so I don't think I've I've had any like encounters or anything but it's mm -hmm. possible I did and I was just you know uh, going back to sleep shrugging it off like most people do I think yeah I know that's I'm taking cool. my first dive into fiction yes yeah, I've never done that before uh-huh okay and, so, so this is this is your experience from uh from when you worked at a doctor's office correct correct okay. yes and as i was writing my i've been working on a memoir for a while now and that was one of the chapters was you know the time i had worked there for over 20 years oh. i had been there okay and um we had always said the people that i'd worked with oh we could write a book <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. All this stuff that happens. And there and you go. I wrote it. And, you know, there's some stuff you really can't say sometimes. Yeah. You want to, but you can't. <laughs> so I thought it was so boring after I read it over. And I thought, maybe mm. I could just change the names of the people, change the place. Uh -huh. where place. And, um. I'm still at the very beginning of it. So we'll see how, where it goes. Okay. And I can You're... add things to it that maybe didn't really happen. Uh, well, exactly. Or, I don't have to. <laughs> you say uh, wrote, you say write a lot of nonfiction. Uh, what are some writers you enjoy reading? Do you read mostly memoirs to kind of get your ideas? I love from... memoirs. Yes, okay. she does. <laughs> That's what you mostly I buy like from the shop. Hear... Yeah. I like to hear that like, especially celebrities, that they had some struggles, that they just didn't yeah. get to the top. And <laughs> that was all easy peasy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know so a few I find them very interesting. Yeah, they are. I know a few years ago, I was reading a lot of rock, uh, rock stars memoirs. And it was really oh. kind of interesting because it's like you were under the influence of all these drugs. <laughs> but you remember it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it was, it was kind of like, but I, I enjoyed it. And I don't know if you yeah. remember the show Behind the Music. It really kind of brought light to that. No. Mm -hmm. oh, it's no like I have the not seen it. Oh, it's from like the late late 90s, early 2000s. It's like a documentary okay. series. Like they pick a band and then they like do the whole origin story. Oh, I've seen a few of those. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I, might have, I might have actually seen that then. The one memoir that I read that I it really didn't do much for me was um, Patty, Patty Boyd. Um, it was called Wonderful Tonight. She was married to George Harrison. Oh, okay. Eric Clapton. Like, oh. Okay. Yeah, she was married to both of them. And okay. songs, were written, lots of songs were written about her. Yeah. And it was the most boring <laughs> um, <laughs> memoir. Her early life was very interesting. Okay. And then, like, oh, she go to this party, and that person was there, and she go to that party, and that person was there, and of mm. course, <laughs> the men were having affairs. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Eric Clapton is an alcoholic, and I mean, that's no surprise. <laughs> but yeah, I it wasn't. There was no. I didn't enjoy it. 
Oh, no, you you see. told me uh, a lot of you you, you uh, picked up the uh, the Prince Harry book right from from the I shop. Did. Yes. And you actually said that was good, right? I enjoyed that. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, it's interesting to see how the other half lives. Yeah. And how it's not so glamorous as, you know, everybody thinks, oh, if I could be married to a prince, that would be <laughs> great. Uh, Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's not something I would aim for. <laughs> yeah. They, they have so many restrictions. And you have to ask permission for everything that they do that most people don't. True. And yeah, good point. I mean, even his his wedding um, had to be approved by the queen, and his dress was what he wore was what the queen said he was going to wear. And oh my gosh, uh, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember when. The queen, before she passed, she came to America and there was all these, like, the Today Show did this whole special about, like, things you couldn't do around the, the queen. And Donald Trump was our president. Where They're like, oh, like a checklist of how many things he's going to break. And, like, he went up and hugged her. And, like, you're not supposed to. <laughs> oh, you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> but I think I just heard about the, um, the Prince Harry book because Donald Trump said, because apparently there's some drug issues or something in that book. It's they it said, I think it's been a while since I read it, but I think there was some marijuana. Yeah. Oh, well, he's saying okay. that because Prince Harry, I think, has a visa, and it's always up. For, it's always up for approval. And Donald Trump's like, I'm not going to approve it. He just got drug illegal illegal immigrants. It's like, Come on, man. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know Jeez. <laughs> I, I just thought it was funny. Well, you know. Like, he should be a prude. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Excellent point. Oh, yeah. Hypocrisy is always fun. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, your, do, you have, do you have any kind of title picked out for your upcoming book yet? Yeah. No, I'm still, I figured it'll come to me at some point. Okay. But I, I don't have one picked out yet. Oh, I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean, if, <laughs> because you're, it's, you're said it's going to be a memoir, right? It'll be based on my memoir, but it'll be based on on things that I remember, but it there's gonna be things in there that are not. So okay. based on true events, but not actually true. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. it's basically the same way that Mary Ellen writes. She takes uh she takes uh snippets of things from her life and uh turns that into a story. And I, yes, I, think, I got the idea from her. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. That's perfect. I thought that'll make this story so much more interesting. <laughs> now, now since you're kind of ripped from the headlines, if you will, <laughs> but not really. Um uh, did you talk to like some other people that were involved in the stories that to make it kind of more clear or did you just take it from your perspective what you oh remember? i just took it from my perspective okay okay if you're gonna fictionalize it in, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> you're gonna fictionalize it anyway so why why get the story too straight <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, like, a it's up to the reader just to, to decide <laughs> He's muttering so much. Holy cow. <laughs> it's up to the reader to decide what what is what is true and what isn't. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> so um I think to the people, if any of the people read it who worked in the office at the time, they'll realize who they are. And <laughs> so you have to be careful about not describing someone as being overweight or uh or uh really annoying or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah <laughs> and you know for the most we all got along pretty well for the most That's part good. a lot of people that came and went over those 20 plus years so and I'm not going to include all of them because it's just it would be too hard to fit them into the story and take them away and bit yeah. yeah that makes there sense. are a few that come and go but <laughs> okay so this is going to be fiction but like drama is that correct or is it? Are you are you adding the mystery from the uh, from the? Neighbor? I'm going to add some mystery. I'm not. I haven't gotten to that point yet. But okay. Of how I'm going to add it, but it, there's going to be a mafia involvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Which, 
I mean, could there have been? I don't know. Hmm. But hmm. I'm going to... At the doctor's office? Um, it, Not at the doctor's office. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the... I don't want to say too much. Yeah, yeah. That, I was going to... A neighbor. <laughs> there you go. That That's probably clear. <laughs> yeah. uh, A neighbor of the doctor's office. Okay. The office well. next door. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Oh, that's a great title. <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh. The office next door. <laughs> <laughs> that might have already been used. I don't know. But mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Okay. So uh, you've, you've got this coming. Do you have any other books planned? Any ideas? Um, I'm thinking of turning a lot of a lot of the things that I've written so far, which haven't been published, um, perhaps into the same kind of form idea. Oh. Um, changing the names. Um, the the idea that came to me just recently was um, my father when he was declining was in a nursing home and my mother-in-law is now at the same state and declining but she stayed at home in her house but there were major differences as to why they had to happen that way i mean there was no way my dad could have stayed in his house because he just doesn't he would never take anything that his children say and follow through with it because right. it's the way it was. Whereas my mother-in-law, she, she goes by the rules, you know, <laughs> don't go downstairs because we don't want you to fall down on the stairs. She doesn't. Mm. My she father was from going from the attic to the basement, like five times a day <laughs> and after he'd had a stroke and, oh. you know, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the differences be, oh, between true. people's, uh, handling of illness that's mm -hmm. yeah I get that yeah well that does oh. that does sound like a fun mystery I I can I can see a mystery forming there oh yeah uh -huh. but I had the two different perspectives because they're handled so differently because they were very different people exactly and yes sometimes you have to handle some thing some way because of the person and precisely mm -hmm. well all right so uh ryan ryan do you have any other questions that you want to uh ask our oh, i never writer? finished telling you about what i like to read because i like memoirs yeah okay. yes yeah. but i also like um stories that have a like a science component to them like i love michael crichton okay all right Thomas Harris, although that's not so sciencey, but I love it's Thomas psychological, yeah. But, yeah, uh, psychological. Dan Brown. Yes, I was gonna say Dan yeah, Brown. You bought a lot Dan of his Brown. from me. Mm -hmm. But and I haven't read all of any of them, so there's still more out there that I haven't read. Yeah. <laughs> and there's so we've, we've got to we've got to get you we've got to get you cheap. into Dean Koontz because he does have some sciencey stuff. In there, and it's also fantasy. I read him, so it's we'll... a little off the wall, though. Hey, hey! You have to really suspend your imagination. You really work Says your. Says the guy who likes Stephen King. <laughs> great, great, Stephen King's great. Whatever, Dean Koontz like is great. Dean Koontz is more greater. Yeah, well, I'd always like to find new authors. Yes, mm -hmm. that I enjoy. Yeah. Well, okay. So, uh, are, are there uh, any other books that you're uh, playing? Well, what are you reading right now? Yeah, well, yeah. There oh, we I also like to read like medical, alternative medicine, self help books. Oh yeah. Okay. And um, the book I'm reading right now is um, about healing. Why you're not healing? Um, oh. And think? it is extremely interesting. Okay. It gets into the. Um, psychology you know be behind illness and interesting yeah huh. why you can't heal and um super interesting cool okay yeah. oh so like mind over medicine sort of thing 
A little bit, yeah. A lot of people, it says, um, like the attention that they get when they're sick. Oh, okay. So they don't really <laughs> want to get better. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but that's that... not always right, right, right. Nice. Um, stuff like that. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, yeah there, I just remind popped in my head about that Gypsy Rose character. I don't know if you guys heard. She was in the news I a few years ago. She, uh, well, they made a Hulu special this past Christmas or this past. So her mom, Gypsy Rose, I think was born a little sick. Okay. And her mom realized, oh, we're getting all this attention. Oh, and she what's just the name for that? Rump what? There's a name for that. For them. Yeah. Thousand or yeah. something. Oh. So she, the the Gypsy Rose, the little girl, she did have some ailments, but her mom definitely made them worse. Right. And she lied about her age, saying things were lost in Katrina. And like this mm -hmm. Gypsy Rose grew up like in a wheelchair and had a feeding tube and had no teeth when really she was just an average girl. Well, mm -hmm. Gypsy f kind of figured out that, hey, there's like a whole nother world out there. And she killed her mom. And she just got out of jail. And all this uh, stuff is now... Well, it was it came to light. It's like a lot of true, true, true crime drama. Mm -hmm. But now who just fictionalized it into a show. Um, yeah, and yeah, it was really, really That's bizarre. Same. That's crazy. Yeah. And she was... she Because she did hire a hitman, the Gypsy Rose did. So mm -hmm. she just got out of jail. And now she's in the news because she's like 25 but she's not really acclimated to the world so yeah. she's like 15 mentally she so, lost a lot of her life then yeah That's and, wow and she posts some really weird things on social media and it's like it's weird mm. well yeah but if you think about her past how would she yeah, possibly it, be it normal all makes, it all makes sense <laughs> it all makes sense but yeah. at the same time it's still really bizarre yeah, mm -hmm. I get that. They, they but, have yeah. a name for that syndrome, and I'm not yeah, exactly sure yeah. what it is. But it's the and mother like, who, like, the intention mom was of their getting, children being sick. Yeah. The mom was getting all this attention, like, uh, free trips to Disney, mm -hmm. uh, all these checks for, and, like, being mother of the year, when really she, she's not. Ew, that's so <laughs> ick. Yeah. Uh. Another thing they said in the book is, like, you should, you have to not just to heal yourself you have to be involved in all the different phases like um spiritual spiritual and um for instance um there's a lot of church stuff in this but not just one religion it's all she covers all religions okay mm -hmm. and, um like a lot of people would pray for themselves to get well you know but she said okay. there was a one case where the woman, she said, I don't, I don't pray for myself. That's what my friends do. It's like, oh. my <laughs> friends are going to take care of that part of it for me. Okay. <laughs> but you, you have to be involved if you want to heal. Right. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> just going back to that. It's like, I know when I'm sick, usually give me two days, with nothing but bed. After that, <laughs> I need to just get over it. <laughs> And I, yeah, and the whole man flu thing, it, it's real. It's real. <laughs> it's like, and I'm, I'm not guilty of it as much as other people are, but I have. Been. There's yeah. nothing wrong with taking care of yourself. Yeah. Precisely. So that you yes. Stay healthy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There you go. There mm -hmm. you go, dude. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we got to close this thing up. And uh, Susan. Whenever you figure out the uh, title for your book, I will definitely be uh, I will definitely be blasting that on social media. Yeah. But what would be the uh, the best book for people to look for of yours on what Amazon is where you publish, right? So look for it on Amazon. Um, right now, my book "You Are Loved," which would apply to anyone, right? Um, yeah, I like to um, for baby showers. Late these oh, that would be really good. Baby showers, they ask it, people who are attending to bring a book for the baby, you know, or to read to the baby after the baby's born. Right. And that would be perfect. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. Yes. That would be really because <laughs> I, I did watch you when you on the, the lit, 
the the other podcast. <laughs> lit yeah, chicks. You were, yeah, lit chicks. I, I almost call it something else, but yeah, it's, that's yeah, we don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it it is on uh, that particular episode, and uh, if you if you check out the uh, YouTube page, you will find both. So there you go. Okay. Susan, you have been a glorious guest. Thank you very much for being on. Yep, thank thank you. you for having me. Absolutely. Ryan, you were a very good co-host. Well done, sir. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, both of you. All right. Have a good day, guys. You too. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.